Hi, I'm Mike Rogers. I am your host today for Self-Advocacy in Action. Welcome, everyone. Well, today we're going to talk about a very hot button and current issue, which is staffing in New York State for people with developmental disabilities. We're going to start out by talking with people that live independently. We have people that live independently and people that live in group home settings. So we're gonna start out with our first question. And that is, what is your staffing situation right now in terms of coverage? And we're gonna start out with Kim Henshin. Well, I have have the I am And you hire your own staff, right, Kim? Because you live yeah. independently, right? Yeah. Okay. So you have coverage, but you're looking for more staff. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to go to Renee. What about you, Renee? You hire your own staff as well. How is that going? I have coverage and I'm in the process of filling my last shift, but it's been hard. Yeah, I know it, it, it's difficult. I am in a similar situation. I live independently as well. Um, it, it's, been, it's been a hard thing. It's not easy to get people these days, is it? No, and it's amazing because of everything going on and because of the um, pay rate that they get is not a good rate. All right, thank you. All right, well, Robin Ripple, what about you? You hire your own staff and live independently. How is your staff situation going as far as coverage is concerned? They want me to go back into a group home. Say that again, Robin. You're saying that, you, that somebody said you, you you should go live back in a group home. Is he, so your staffing situation is getting that bad that you're having trouble finding people to help you every day, right, Robin? And we, as we can see, they you know that's very emotional and it's a difficult thing when you can't find people. Well, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute, Robin. But thank you for sharing that. All right. So now that we that we got a little bit of a view of, of how people are dealing with staff and getting coverage, we want to talk to people individually. So I'm gonna go with Kim. Kim, um, you live in a pretty beautiful house. A lot of us have seen pictures of that with two other people. So how is, how is your situation and what does your, what does your staff help you do? What do they help you do on a, on a daily basis? Give us an idea, please. Okay, now I, I heard you say they help you get up, they help you with eating, and what was the last thing? That, yeah. Um, okay, say that one more time for me. That, hmm. Dressing, okay, all right. Yeah, okay, so you're telling us that they help you do everyday living skills. Yeah. Without, them, without them, you wouldn't be able to, you 
be able to do those things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. And next, we're going to go to we're going to go to Robin. Now, Robin, you've been living on your own for thirteen years, right? Yes. Okay. I so, have. And 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 that's really cool because before then you lived, you you had started out in in the institution, correct? You 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 lived in the institution here in um in Western New York. Right. Yep. Okay, and then you lived in the group home setting, and for those that may not know, that's where where there's multiple people living in one home, and you have staff come in and help you. But well, you wanted to li- you wanted to live on your own, right? <laughs> So you advocated yeah. with, with, and, and you were very strong in doing that, which is great. Now, here's my question. Why wouldn't you want to go back to living in a group home? What is so great about living on your own? Let us know. Let the audience know. Because I wouldn't have the choices. You wouldn't have choices. What do you mean by, give us an example of what you mean by you wouldn't have choices. I would have to go to bed at a certain time. Okay. All right. So you you feel that living on your own gives you freedom to be who you are. All right. And so so that's very good. But in order to have that, you need staff to help you, right? Yes. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Now, Renee, we're going to go over to Renee. Renee, how does all this make you feel? Like you said you're having trouble finding people that it's difficult because of the pay and everything. How does that make you feel as a person? I think not just for me, but for a lot of people that I know as an advocate and as somebody that's talked with a lot of people, um, it makes us feel like we don't matter to people, like we're not a priority, like other um, programs and systems are more of a priority than we are. And I think it kind of, devalues the importance of individuality and um, individual identity um, when you um, approach it as a, a system instead of a personalized um, need of people. And, and it makes me question if something even bigger were to happen in the world, um, what people like myself would do in that case and um, what would happen. Like I've said a lot of times to um, friends and different things, like not to be graphic, but like if the world was ending, um, people like me would probably be the first to not survive because we need other people to show up if people are worried about taking care of what they need first, they're not gonna think about us. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, so we are gonna we are gonna move on now to Kenny. Kenny um, lives in a certified site in a group home where people come in and help you, Kenny, the staff. So it's a staff group home. So I've been talking with, I believe, Sophia all week, and this is why I'm here. I just feel that, and I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just pick it back on Renee's point for a minute. Renee, I am a self-advocate. I do work under my boss. Um, I, 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 I want to say to you that I get your point. I get it. 
these last couple of months has been tough for all of us. Okay. That's not, sorry, okay. Mike. No, Kenny, that, that's great. Thank you for sharing that with us. You're that's welcome. great. All right. Um, <laughs> Lee, what have you been been seeing in in your house what have you been um what have you been experiencing as far as staff burnout as for staff burnout staff seem to be running on empty meaning they are more moody oh they're more moody so they're getting affected emotionally and is that affecting their work? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I wanna move on to Jeff Patterson. What can we do about this, Jeff? What, how can we deal with this situation? What steps can we take? Well, it's a great, great question, Mike. Um, you know, obviously- What as you caused this? situation in the first place yeah um you know this situation was caused by a lot of really bad decisions by new york state government um and you know so so a, a couple of them they have cut billions of dollars out of the service system over the past several years they have refused to provide cost of living increases to the field for the past 12 years. This is the first year that there will be one at 1%. We went 10 years with no cost of living increases when other sectors got them. So as some of you have noted, you feel like you're less important to the state. Well, the state has said that by funding other sectors and not funding this one, not giving increases. Um, and, and in addition to that, uh, you know, they raised the minimum wage for fast food workers and made those jobs more appealing, um, you know, and, and nothing against fast food workers. They work hard, they, they deserve to make a good living, but those jobs are not harder than being a direct support professional uh, and they don't have anywhere near the, the, the level of stress or demand on them. So at time after time over the past 12 years, New York State has chosen to make this issue worse. And when we're telling them what they can do to make it better, they don't listen. What can you do? You gotta, you gotta make noise. And the way to do that is to call the governor's office, um, write letters to the governor, write emails to the governor, go on his website, go on Twitter and tweet at him because he does not understand what's at stake here. My heart is breaking listening to Robin say that you know, she might have to change her living situation. You know, the reality is there, there's a problem in the group homes too. I mean, there are not enough staff to support the people who are living in group homes. So let alone people who are living in the community, living independently, there are agencies closing group homes because they can't hire staff. So this is a problem throughout the field and the governor doesn't understand it. Um, or he ignores it, it's one or the other. He either doesn't get it or he doesn't care. And it's time for him and other state officials to show that they get it and to show that they care. There is another cut scheduled to go into effect on providers this month. They need to cancel it. They've gotten billions of dollars from the federal government. They do not need to cut more funds out of this field. They have cut enough. Stop the cuts, number one. Number two, they have received over $700 million. The state has received over $700 million from the federal government because of COVID to support this system. Take some of that money and use it to raise the pay for DSPs because they need it. It is the only way we will be able to hire enough people to provide what we need to in this field. So number two, raise the wage. And number three, Go back to giving those cost of living increases every year. We cannot go 12 years with no funding increases while they're taking 2.6 billion out of the system. So number three, fund the future. They need to do those three things and maybe we'll have a shot at fixing this. 
Okay, thank you, Jeff, for that passionate, that passionate response. Um, BJ, you are a, a well-known advocate and systems advocate. What do we need to do? What do, do advocates need to do? What do supporters need to do from your perspective? Well, I'm gonna be completely honest and blunt now. Jeff is right. The governor doesn't care about any of us unless he knew we weren't gonna vote for him or those elected officials who we might vote for. We need to tell them we do matter because we are a voting block that counts. And even if we didn't vote for them, we still need to talk to them because they all work for us. And as far as finding staff, I found myself on the street while shopping saying, oh, that person might be good for a job. So I'll just go up to people and ask, you want a job? Which I've never done before. So it's very unusual for me to do that, but I have shifts I need to fill. But please remember people, we're all in this together. The providers, the families, all of us, we're all struggling with this together. We need to tell our elected officials enough is enough because I'm tired, you're tired, and I want to see the best for everybody. So speak up, speak out, make it loud, and do it proud. All right, BJ, I couldn't say it better myself. Well, thank you everybody for coming on and sharing with us, sharing your passionate pleas and your perspectives. And thank everybody for joining on us on Self-Advocacy in Action today. And please help because we need it. Thank you.